Okay, thank you very much for inviting me to discuss this very interesting paper and for those two days of very interesting presentation on household heterogeneity. So, uh, so to start with, um, I really enjoyed the reading of the paper and so here is a couple of summary of what they do according to me. So they compute the Gini based on housing value and surface for Belgium. So here results were mostly presented for housing value at several levels of aggregation, country, region, municipality, and even dwellings. And second, uh, after providing us some description and feeling about how the inequalities in the housing stock might probably reflect the real uh, inequalities between households, they then investigate the impact of a reform of what we could call the transfer tax or stamp duty in a uh, housing economist languages. So for me, it's a very promising paper, and actually many, maybe, maybe uh, more promising papers with an S, because I think it raises many interesting questions and maybe too many interesting questions for one single paper. So I see here one paper investigating the relationship between housing, the, what does housing stock look like, and income inequality. And I think this is already a very first important contribution for the literature that has not been investigating so far and would deserve a paper by, by C. And then you have also one paper on inequality and housing consumption, which is reflecting by the cadastre, and finally a paper on the, incident, on the differentiated incidence of the STEM duty and contributing then to the large literature on stamp duty reforms that uh, are actually, uh, that is growing over the last years, I would say. So this, this presentation is just to provide some feedbacks, comments to push the author to go uh, further in those three di directions. So the first comment would be inequality of what? Because as we saw, we had a very nice descriptive statistics at very different level of aggregation, starting from the cadastre. One issue with this cadastre is that you observe the dwellings, their characteristics, but you have no idea, and unfortunately, because this is the purpose of the cadastre, so I'm pretty sure this information are inside, but were not transferred to the researcher, but you don't know who owns those dwellings. This information, is probably here and actually maybe just uh, some push from the National Bank would help the author also to get this extra column to tell us more interesting things or further things about inequalities. So they are talking about housing inequalities starting from the stock. So inequalities, it's uh, housing inequalities, it's complex, uh, it's a complex uh, object and actually so there is first the notion of inequalities that Actually, there are many ways, different ways to measure inequalities. You can use Gini, variance, tail, entropy indexes, and so forth. And this is really not my specialty, and so I won't talk too much about this specific part. Then there is the concept of housing. And housing is very, very, very fascinating and very complicated. It's time you think about housing, you have many different functions that can come to your mind. It might be, and like, let's, start to the two simplest one. It can be a capital good for its owner. It's just an asset with a price P that enters the wealth of the owner. So might be, maybe this housing inequalities of the stock will reflect the inequality of wealth. But it has also a return R, which is a net rent. Okay, so then, and then this rent, what is it? The rent is the, consum the consumption part because housing is also a consumption good. So it's also the consumption of the guy that, or the household that is living inside. And it provides a service which is usually measured in national account by the growth rent if you're a tenant or your imputed rent if you're an owner. And on top of that, housing is also a composite good, which is composed of a land, okay, where your housing is located, what is the value of the parcel you're located in, and a structure. And so both of those components are very different properties. So the location of your dwelling is something that cannot move and its value is associated with what applies to these specific areas. Zoning, schooling, taxes, subsidies, pollution, regulations, uh, and your neighbors, okay? What are the impact of the other guys on yourself? And the structure has also a bunch of properties that are also fascinating. 
You have the energy efficiency. This is really important in period of peak inflation of energy prices nowadays. You have also the depreciation of this capital following you are living in a building of the 70s or a very modern building. So it's uh, uh, maintenance might be very of a different cost. You are also exposed to noise following your, uh, how, you should, uh, how you should isolate the building. And you have an interesting dimension that is accounting for the authority, the surface you are consuming, which is also kind of important as you can have overcrowding problems, undercrowding problems, and thus it also reflects a, a particular aspect of housing that you are consuming. So, the first comment I would push to the other to go through is to mostly define first to what kind of inequality in terms of households perspective they would like to prefer, they would prefer to talk to. What is the closest kind of inequality in terms of households perspective that would be reflected by, uh, by, the, by, by, by the characteristics of the housing stock? So is this inequality in terms of income? Is this in terms of consumption? Or is this in terms of wealth? My guess is so far the closest is, uh, is, on, con is on income or consumption, or probably more consumption. But then there are some adjustments to make. First, so because the unit of observation is a dwelling. So a dwelling is usually occupied by a household absent the vacancy rates. So, you can say, okay, this is going to be the value of your dwelling or the surface of the dwelling will be very, very much correlated with housing consumption. But the unit of consumption of uh, housing consumption is usually the rent. And here they are measuring it with the price. Okay, if you think that the rent price ratio is homogeneous across all Belgium, that's all right. But usually it's not the case. There are huge special variation in rent price ratio that has been documented in the literature that I would strongly recommend to homogenize everything and rather focus on rents. Then when you have the unit of measurements of the surface, it's also consumption, so I think it's all right. And you have many amenities that are, that are many values of short dwellings that is associated with this consumption. So, unfortunately, there is no information of, on ownership so this limits the capacity of the authors to say something about uh, wealth inequalities. I would really push the bank or to, to, to provide to those authors uh, access to, to those information to who holds the dwellings because then it would also allow them to measure inequality in terms of wealth. So, so far, I would rather recommend if they cannot access to the ownership data, I would recommend them to access, uh, to, 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 to focus on the rental value of those data and already to, to, to distinguish, to, to provide us robust analysis of inequalities of housing consumption with rental value of those dwellings and the surface. And then they could also split what is the part of in housing consumption inequality that is due to the service provided by the area, the surface of the dwellings, but also what is the share inequality that is due to just the locational value, access to amenities. So, yeah, so this is exactly what I just... Um, and then, so this would be the first contribution of the paper, maybe already a paper per se, a very nice descriptive paper. Then there is a question of how much inequality in housing consumption, or the information you can gather from data, data can map in inequality in income, which is something that the authors look very concerned about. So you can assume that housing inequality might be a proxy for income inequalities. So here, there are some papers that argue that housing is a, has a, is a constant share in consumption. This is usually very debatable in the literature, as usually we will uh, assume amorphetic when we are, we are looking at, uh, at uh, housing utility function which with a housing component, so the utility function tends to be uh, non-homotetic, and constant share would assume homoteticity. So uh, I would really recommend to take this issue seriously, maybe develop a small model of housing consumption with a non-homotetic utility and shows how this maps, how variation in income will map into different into different variation in housing consumption in order to be able to back down whether in particular like measurement in 
inequalities in consumption would constitute a, a faithful reflection of inequalities, whether it would be a lower burn, upper burn, how the measurement would be biased. And also this would, I think, constitute a very promising paper, a very interesting contribution, in order to then, once you validate your method on one given country, and then you go to another country where you don't have any information on income, but you have on the, with the cadastre, then you could infer also directly income inequalities information from the housing consumption inequality. And I guess it's also a very, very promising project. And finally, the last, uh, the last contribution of the paper is to focus on stamp duties or transfer tax. So in this literature, so actually there have been a lot of recent papers that have been trying to understand what was the impact of transfer tax on the real estate market. And there are also, and I think the author did not notice this, but if you look at the graphic around the, the moment of the, where the, the STEM duty reform, actually what you usually notice is those reforms mostly impact the transfer volume around, uh, around the reform, in particular when it's a ta tax hike. Because like people that are going to rush in order to, 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 to buy dwellings before, before the tax hike increases. Here it's a tax, uh, a tax decrease, so I guess people delayed a lot their transaction. So this is something that is worth looking at, just to engage with the literature. And then there is a large literature on the welfare cost of those taxes, which are transaction taxes that tend to reduce household mobilities, generate friction on the employment market, also affect the trade-off between renting and owning a home. And so I guess also the authors might have a nice opportunity to take this very nice reform in order to engage with this literature and look at what was the general impact of STEM duties in Flanders, of the de decrease in STEM duties in Flanders. Um, and finally, so, so to sum up what the author finds, so they find a positive impact on prices, so reassuringly this is in line with what previous paper has found. But uh, then they focus really much on uh, mapping this price impact on inequalities because it affects the value of dwellings. Here, because they don't have really information on the owners, I think it's very limited. And on top of that, you should have also a flavor on how, what is the incidence of those taxes and how the tax burden will be split between the seller, the buyer, and this would require to turn structural. So I think it's a complicated, uh, complicated research project, maybe a fourth research project, but so far and the first step I would really Already the simple fact that they find a differentiated impact of the reform following market segments, the value of dwellings, is already a contribution to the literature on stamp duties. And I would really dig, would really recommend to dig into this dimension in order to understand what drives this heterogeneous impact. I guess this is because market has segmented, as shown in a recent contribution by Monica Pialcesi and co-authors. So here I would like to know more, to understand along what dimension. Is this just a price? Is this just more uh, location, location of the dwellings that matters? Is this the size? Are single uh, uh, like studio more likely to be affected by those kind of tax, more rigid? Is this a story of supply elasticity in different market segments? This is really something I would, I would know more about and I think pretty exciting. So I really thank the authors to give me the opportunity to discuss this paper, the Bank of Belgium, and I really look, I'm really looking forward to see what those three papers are going to become. Thank you very much.